Uh, Love and Death is about two church-going couples in a bucolic Texas town uh, until someone picks up an ax. I read the two Texas Monthly articles and the book Evidence of Love, which is what the series is based on, and I thought, if this wasn't true, you couldn't make it up. The story was so outrageous and amazing that it felt like a story that needed to be explored. And David D. Kelly and I, he was sent the stories, I was sent the stories, as was Per Sari and Nicole Kidman, and we all came together to develop what became Love and Death. And I think all of us wanted to look at, you know, this, this world that on the surface, nothing is as it appears to be. You have to look deeper to see what's going on. And, you know, it's a beautiful surface, but underneath is something quite different. Uh, but we have a lot of empathy and love for these characters. I don't know. I don't. I. I don't. I. I don't think about any other character I've played. I guess when I'm starting a project, it's not. There's no like comparative part of my brain that's like, what do we do different? Um, I. I think you feel that way when you read a script and you think, oh, this feels a bit repetitive, of something I've just done or something, and maybe that's not interesting for audiences or for myself to explore. But I think what Leslie is talking about, this this veneer um, was something that I was interested in playing with tonally. I thought there is something um, to be had with these absurd circumstances. And there's um, a lot of opportunity for, for humor in something that is such a tragedy. Um, and so that was really exciting to me. The thing that I keep thinking about with this show and how it relates to today is this is a show about a time in this town where there weren't a lot of opportunities and it felt paralyzing and wanting something more out of life. There has to be something bigger than these rule books that we've been told and that we're following. And today I feel like we have endless options, which is equally as paralyzing. Um, and so I feel like there's this like stagnant feeling of like needing to needing to move past whatever seems um, like the the typical way of life or protocol. And I think she's just I think she's also like a romantic from the traditional standpoint and um, is a dreamer and wants wants fireworks, wants sparks, wants something greater than than what was in front of her. Um, she's a very resilient woman. She's optimistic. She's a doer. I, it was really kind of amazing. Lily and I would be in like these weird moments off camera doing like really kind of dark scenes. And I was talking to her about the thing that like gets me through these seven months is she's the ultimate optimist, <laughs> you know? And so I could like you, it wasn't like tormenting to play the part because she really is trying to look on the bright side of things, so much so that the woman herself, Candy Montgomery, became a drama specialist um, for children. So that's like someone who really is trying to find the positive in every experience, including being tried for murder. Yeah, I, I, I think David, the other thing that I, I want to say about David's writing, let me start with the first ball that you threw at me, which is that he has no foils. I, I have been lucky enough to, to, I'm now working with him for the third time on something. Um, and I, the way he, he writes his characters, the way he writes women, the way he writes relationships, um, it's so engaging, it's so detailed, it's so uh, fully realized, but it also comes with a lot of freedom, I feel, as an actor. It's like there's this wonderful space that he creates with his writing. You don't feel controlled by it or um, sort of cornered by it. And I think that that lends itself to all of the characters in his in, in what he writes um, being identifiable, relatable. There's just like space around all of them. So I think for audiences, it's it's not about just latching on to one character or one relationship. You really get the landscape um, of everyone. And, and, and it's hard to do because so many people are like, well, this is about this one thing and everyone else is just here to kind of move that forward. And while that's always true in a sense, um, 
I just feel like the way that the the balance is created in his world is very special, and it's and it's makes it really satisfying to act in in that. Pat Pat does a uh, a unique thing after he figures out what's going on as he takes a look at his side of the street and then kind of admits what's going on with him and uh, and gives that to Candy basically this is what I'm accountable for I'm acknowledging it and uh, you know I want to reconcile that sort of thing that's not not super common especially the self accountability part nowadays and uh, <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so, for him to do that, you know, I think that's how he keeps his cool. He's he's uh, he's committed to the family, you know. He's committed to this woman. Um, they sadly, you know, they have a great rapport, but they don't have intimacy. Like they don't, they're not able to reveal enough or perceive enough about each other to solve any real problems. And so. We love seeing them together. They ha they laugh. They have a good time. They have their ups and downs. But then once it's really pressurized, you know, they, they take a good go at it. But we know uh, from from the real people, they end up separating and that sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that's probably how he keeps his cool. He's just not like not an upticker, Pat Montgomery. You know, he like is not he's not punching any walls or you know like throwing any vases or anything like that. He's uh, he's. Uh, no, no, he's pretty mellow. <laughs>